Hello, welcome to Romero Threads on YouTube where it's all about embroidery. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to perfectly place your embroidery logo on a polo shirt. So here on the Mighty Hoop Station, I kind of made some marks here to kind of illustrate and get an idea of everything that I talk about. I'm gonna make sense out of that with these marks that I have here. Okay, so right now it looks like it's all crazy stuff happening right here. But this is gonna help me explain the do's and the don'ts on placement on a polo shirt. Okay, so first off, let me open up my polo shirt here. This shirt here is for my own personal project. Okay, it's a pro club. And one thing that I like about polo shirts, I like to look for polo shirts that are 60-40. So 60% 60 cotton, 40% polyester. It just gives it a, a like a nice little stretch here. All right, very embroidery friendly. Now in today's video, what I'm doing is I'm looking for the perfect placement. And just as an FYI, there is no magic number where I can give you an exact, exact measurement on where your perfect placement is at. And that's because it really depends on two factors, okay? Uh, factor number one is the size of your shirt. The placement on a small is going to be different from the placement of a large, especially once you go XL, double XL. All right, you're, you're going more wide on the placement. Number two is the shape of your design. So depending what the shape of your design is, that's going to play a role on where exactly your placement's at. All right, so right here I have different shapes. I'm going to put this as a free download. Okay, you could print this out. It'll be a PDF here. And what I like to do, this is cardstock, so, okay, it's pretty thick, all right. I like to cut these out, and I have the measurement here. So you could kind of, when you cut them out, you could kind of see for yourself how it looks on the placement. What I like to use, okay, you've seen me use this, the embroidery helper, okay. I've had this forever, and this is the only one I've ever bought. So it's lasted me years and years. But you can see here, I can place, it kind of gives you an idea, all right? It gives you a sweet spot of where to place your center point. All right, so right here, I just have a chalk pencil. All right, and then you just look for the size. So I have a size large here. So I just put a little dot right here, all right? Just simple little thing. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut this up. So I'm gonna make a design that's 2.5 by 2.5. So right now my guide has me about right here okay this is my center point has me right here sometimes i like to override my embroidery helper you could kind of get an idea right here you kind of have an idea whether you want to shift a little bit up if you want to go a little to the left usually i like to go a little bit uh to the left i like to be using my bottom button as a reference okay so anytime you're using the guides for the most part you should be good with the center point but sometimes Okay, you could use judgment. For example, here, if we have a narrow, okay, let's say this is a four by one, narrow one. When we have narrow, you wanna be careful kinda reaching this area here close to the armpit because what happens is once you get kinda in the long area, once it's stitched out and somebody's wearing it, it could tend to kinda fall in this waterfall area. Okay, the last thing you wanna do is be in this area here. What I like to do once I'm going a little narrow, I like to start pushing to the left side, all right? Getting closer to this area, just so I don't, I don't have any fall off here on the right-hand side, all right? And then here, you could kind of have an idea where you want to be. Now, this here is the Mighty Hoop Station. This makes hooping so much faster, so much more accurate, especially once you get to those high quantities, all right? You want to have yourself a station, as you can see, made in USA. Very tough, strong material stuff right here, okay? This stuff's gonna last you forever. And I have some marks here that I've made to kind of illustrate some points that I wanna emphasize on, okay? If we place our embroidery helper here, okay? You can see it's right here, perfectly down the center. This red mark that I have here, this is for my size large. And then the medium, okay, which is this black line, that's going exactly at four inches right here. Now your center point, this is just general information right here. Your center point, usually you want to have it between four and five inches. I know sometimes uh, the general rule is 
anywhere between three and seven inches okay but once you pass the five inch mark i personally think you start going too much on the right hand side so i like to limit myself maybe at five inches now if you're going a uh, double xl triple xl now you might go to the 5.25 5.5 and if you're going super super big you might be at the six unless you're in that area you, you you shouldn't really pass the six inch area for your center point okay but for our most popular sizes your small medium large even for your females okay we want to be under five inches here really the sweet spot is hanging out around the four inch mark okay that's where i have my marks here this red line this is my large here on the embroidery helper and you could see here it's at four and a quarter all right the xl has it at four and a half and then i've showed this one in a previous video here okay these are just notes that i have on the embroidery helper okay it kind of breaks it down and it lets you kind of have an idea of areas that you should be in. All right. So right here, I have it at large at 4.25. You can see my red mark is perfectly at 4.25. XL is at 4.5. I'm kind of highlighting here these two marks. These are like my sweet spot. So let me remove my ruler here. So really what I want to highlight here, okay, this is kind of like my sweet area right here. So when I'm placing, okay, my hoop, usually I'm around like in this area right here, okay, usually like at 23, I have my center mark here that I marked, okay, it's close to the size large. All right, the good thing about the 5.5, really for a lot of your logos, all right, it clears that area right here. Now, what I like to use, all right, this is just an extra add-on, all right, I have all the information down below. And just as a reminder, I do have a free shipping code for Mighty Hoop products. If you order online, you could use promo code Romero and that'll give you free shipping within the continental US. This one here, I like this station extender because you can see it opens up the shoulders here. It gives me more area here to help me strain up. This is where you can go with your customer, get a confirmation exactly where they want it. For the most part, they'll trust your judgment. They'll say, hey, you're the professional. You know where to put my placement, okay? So sometimes, especially if you have these narrow ones, okay? There might be a time where you might wanna get a confirmation. Uh, worst case scenario, you can try a polo shirt on and see for yourself if that's a good spot. So here it has me at this area. So if we measure this out here, okay? You can see I'm at about 4.25. Since I have a circular, I might want to go a tad bit up and a tad bit to the left. That's my judgment call. The perfect placement, I'm going to say a lot of it is a judgment call. It's what do you feel, okay? Where do you feel is the best location? So here in this situation, I'm going to pull up and move to the left a tad bit. I'm going to override it, okay? So I'll put that mark here. So when I'm hooping, I know I'm going up a bit to the left. And as an FYI, I would say if you're doing a job for this for your customer, you want to document all this stuff. So two, three years later when you're doing another run for them, okay, you have all these notes written down. When we're talking about the perfect placement on a polo shirt, two things that I want to highlight here. One, okay, you can use your guide. This is like it's taking you to the spot, but you still have to confirm and make sure that your final location is good to go. Just some important guidelines. Sweet spot, okay, sweet spot from four to five, okay. You could probably even go, uh, you can uh, probably even go on some very narrow designs, okay. You can push to the left, okay, maybe three to five. Could definitely see once we hit six, okay, you're close to no man's land, armpit land right here. You definitely don't want your design in the armpit area. If you're ever iffy on a location, it's always better to push left, all right? But you do wanna keep some finger space in between your design and your button. You don't wanna be smashed right close to these buttons either. So your limit area is this area here. You wanna be right below collar. And a big one here, you don't wanna be below this area here, all right? You wanna be right here. This is the chest area the meat part of the chest. All right, now let's go ahead, let's hoop this up. 
I know my numbers. Okay, you can see my colors here. So this is like my sweet spot right here. For size large, I kind of already have it in memory. Number 23 is my go-to number. And then if I were to go XL, I kind of go diagonal. So 28, 23, 18 is more like for uh, small and large. This is where I know a lot of people mess it up right here, right? Because I know because I used to mess it up right here. So here we have the 5.5. 5.5 pretty much covers a whole range of logos for polo shirts. So if you're doing polo shirts, okay, this is kind of like automatic hoop that you want to have. Here for backing, this is like my favorite one that I have. This is the Pro Performance from All Stitch. 8x8, make sure you get the 8x8. Alright, so you can see how the 8x8 perfectly covers this hoop right here. Alright, snap, snap. You want these snap snaps? Look at how flat this is. In this situation, with polo shirts, you want to be sure that your backing goes over your hoop. Place polo shirt over. Okay, it just slips down perfectly. And I like to bind up all the buttons. It tines up nice and tight up here. Okay, and I'm just following the seams up here. All right, you can put this one down here and it'll kind of give you a reference to see if you're good, all right? Or you can put a ruler right here too. Down the buttons, bam. All right, looks good. Okay, so these little screws right here these are gonna sit right in here. You want your notch face up. Okay, it's just resting. And if you have to make any changes, the shirt is good here. So let's say uh, I wanted to bring this design a tad bit down. For this project for size L, I put it, so now I changed it to a 27. All right, now it looks like it's, you can kind of eyeball it right here. You can kind of see where it kind of lines up. Once everything is good, this is the easiest part right here. Right, and then you want to verify. Sometimes you could just kind of pass your hand on the bottom, but this is how you want your backing to look like, okay? This, this kind of ensures that your design is going to have a nice, flat, consistent area to stitch on. You don't want this to be loose or you don't want to have gaps right here because that can sometimes give you errors on the stitching. All right, we're going to stitch this out and then I'm going to put some tender touch to kind of really seal the deal right here. Okay, we are done with the embroidery and we are looking super clean. Now, we're not done yet, okay? It's the cleanup phase and really, this is, I haven't even touched it yet. Thread wise, there's no cleaning necessary here. Okay, everything was all nice and clean here. This orange, all right, I don't know if you can tell through the camera, but this is a candle thread here, and it has like a nice clean shine to it. Right? Very nice clean, like, I like the contrast because this is a navy blue sweater with the super bright orange, all right, really stands out. Now, let's go ahead, let's add some tender touch. So here, I'm actually on my iron board right here. Okay, so, of course, we're gonna flip it inside out. I'm gonna cut our backing and add tender touch. All right, so right here, I'm gonna use tender touch, and this is to cover the stitches here. So here it says, protect sensitive skin from scratchy stitches, a soft and flexible knit mesh that retains the hand and drape of the fabric. Okay, also this one, I like to use this. It prevents puckering too, just over time. It says, great for baby and kids garment, of course, sports apparel, lingerie, spandex, golf shirts, covering any embroidery that may be irritating to the skin. All right, so this is how it looks, it has like a mesh so what you want to do you want to cut out a piece so here i cut out a piece all right and all we have to do is a couple steps here here i got the iron so here i'm using a rowenta pro master 1700 watt what i want to do and right now 
I have it high and I'm just gonna iron the the shirt okay I don't really want to hit the threads just because the iron's hot and I don't want to burn the threads but I do want to warm up the shirt just so when I place that tender touch the tender touch just smoothly warms up onto the shirt right now I have my my iron super hot now I'm gonna lower it kind of like a little bit above half place this right over it just get it perfectly centered now I'm just gonna place my iron right above it okay as an FYI this is my wife's polo shirt here okay this is a Port Authority this is a hundred percent polyester and this shirt here this is like a couple years old shirt it's gone through like hundreds and hundreds of washes all right and let me just show you the tender touch it's still here all right the original one the first one that we put all right so you can see that the tender touch it lasts and this is um polyester and, and you can see that it hasn't puckered or anything all right still standing strong after years and years of washing all right it lasts you just have to make sure when you laundry it you don't put it on full blast heat just dry it on delicate settings all right don't don't go overboard with the heat so this here is our final one okay so let's see if we can get a good view right here if you have any questions comments any detail that i might have forgot please leave it down in the comments below and i'll catch you on the next one peace out